Well, hello, it's Jim Desmere. And don't worry, we will continue on our missile projects. I just needed a little break from making missile stuff in from the depth. And, and thanks for the comments. I will take in a lot of the advice and see what I can come up with. But this time I wanted to um, go back a little bit to Crams. Crams is actually my favorite weapon in From the Depth because they're so damn cool. And they say Big Bang. So um, I thought, how powerful can I really make this? Because I kind of realized that I try to make my crams um, kind of useful. <laughs> so I, I don't really have any so-called doom crams. And this is, of course, a problem. Uh, so this time I'll see just about how powerful... Um, my cram can be because I do think that if I am good at any of the weapon systems in From the Depth, it would be crams. Uh, I feel like crams is kind of my uh, to go thing. So hopefully, I'll be able to put something together that deals some serious damage and might even have a use in a future uh, battleship. Uh, so basically, having a cram main battle uh, turret or something like that. That's what I'm thinking anyways. So I'll just continue building this base a little bit. Um, we are going with a... If you go to sub objects, we have these turret templates. Um, so you can kind of know how big the outer and inner circles can be. So I kind of built this um, maximum inner circle. I guess you can make bigger turrets than 17 times 17, but uh, I'm kind of imagining that this is kind of the neck of the turret and then I can fit some uh, other stuff, you know, in it later. Anyways, that's the thought. Let me just build a little bit and I'll be back. Okay, so I kind of set up this little base of the turret. And I'm not, I don't really know if this is the case, because honestly, I haven't tried this. But if you know, please tell me in the comments. But I'm thinking that if I add a couple of repair bots to this little turret, perhaps it will actually, you know, repair the turret first. So you can see they are properly on this turret here. And I'm thinking that perhaps if these repair bots are on this turret, Perhaps they will repair the turret before they repair the rest of the ship. <clears throat> Just a thought. I don't really know. Maybe they also need some materials to uh, take it from, but I assume they can take the materials from the main construct, right? I don't know. They should say something to me if they can't. Ah, in any case, uh, we also added some of these, some EMP surges here. You can see there. Uh, because the turret base can take small amounts of EMP damage and I want to make sure that the turret base doesn't get nuked as well as the by like EMP nuked uh, as well as not the um, all-in-one weapon controller and I ended up with having a double layer of armor one sheet of metal with one sheet of uh, heavy armor uh, thinking that the Metal will get the armor bonus from the heavy armor like if we go here and uh, Some people have asked you uh, asked me about this, but if you click Z Zit as in zebra you can find a health and AC tool and if you look with a health and AC tool you can see that um, This metal now has the value of 52 armor class This has 47, you know, they get different bonuses if we look at this it has like 40 so that's kind of nice. Uh, so we get a bonus from, uh, you know, the block behind it. So having that heavy armor behind will boost this. And it even boosts, you know, the heavy armor with metal behind it. Uh, so that's kind of how we set up here. And here we can see heavy armor back by heavy armor is 72. Pretty cool. Yeah, well, anyways, that's what I set up. I almost thought to have a layer of wood in front of it to really get the heavy armor boost, but then I thought that... 
this is not the place to kind of save cost. We don't need to have this kind of hard wood in the front. We probably need proper metal. And I thought also to do like maybe the steel striders and have a layer of applique instead in front of the heavy armor. But I ended up with this more sturdy design since the interior components are not explosive like uh, APS. Um, the in interior components are non-explosive so we can repair some damages and it's better to keep a pretty sturdy integrity. Anyways, that's, that's just some thoughts. Um, we should now do a little bit of cram titris. I think that the turret will be kind of this high, so it's a pretty high turret. But, uh, you know, I really want that meat going on there. So let's let's just select a little uh, let's call it a temporary connection point because I'm thinking where to put the kind of firing piece if we're gonna have the firing piece kind of in the front or if we're gonna have the firing piece kind of in the back and or in kind of in the middle and oh, for survivability I guess it's better to have it kind of in the back but it can also look a little bit, a tad bit cooler to have it like more in the front. But since it uh, will only be elevation for the barrel, it doesn't matter too much. If the barrel would move sideways as well, we could probably have it more in the front. But that's probably for a more smaller turret. Really need to con connect, uh, protect, I mean, this firing piece. Because we're only having a single fire piece, uh, single firing piece for this turret. So I kind of think we're going to have it kind of high up, maybe not like, like this high, but yeah, kind of like, kind of like here. A little bit in the back, let's see, maybe a little bit more in the f hmm, let me sink. No, not sink, I mean think. I'm just kidding with you, I'm not that bad at English, or maybe I am, I'm, I'm, I probably, I probably am, okay, never mind. Alright, so I have this little spine of the turret going down here and basically I thought that, uh, you know, the firing piece, we, we set it here, one block behind center and I thought that we are having this different like connection poles going out from it up, down and, no, uh, side, to the sides and back and down uh, just to increase some survivability. And then I kind of surrounded this little thing with some gauge increasers uh, just around this thing here. We'll of course have other gauge increasers otherwhere, uh, other places, but uh, elsewhere, I mean. <laughs> My English is deter deteriorating. Yeah, that's just that just confirms it. Anyways, uh, to kind of increase survivability, we have this kind of arms going out from side to side. And on this like level, I imagine we're gonna have this kind of plate which is like connecting all the different uh, rods that will be going down to connect all the theatres going on here. So we have this spine going down here and to connect everything together down here, I'm thinking we're gonna have a cram connector sheet like that. So we can really like interconnect and make sure that everything is connected. I want this thing to take a proper beating before like laying down and crying. Yeah, that's that's exactly that. So anyways, uh, I'm thinking that we need to do some heavy barrels. So let's do two heavy barrels for ish protection because they do have some armor and health and stuff like that. Then we can probably have a couple of mobility barrels and these will still be within the turret. So it's acceptable. And then we're going to have a couple of... Uh, Let's see here. We're gonna have ba -da -ba -ba -ba, elevation barrels. So now we have 35 degrees. If we add one, we get 45, 55, 65. Actually, we probably want an elevation barrel. Okay. Uh, at front of that, like that. So 70, 65. Actually, like 55 degrees, 65. Okay. 65 that's kind of high though how high is that it's like it's more than 45 it's a lot more than 45 so that's kind of that kind of looks a little bit stupid let's maybe should we even have an elevation bar 45 degrees is that more than enough 45 degrees now let's have one more 55 degrees that's more than enough okay 
Uh, it's kind of slow, but uh, it will be slower because I imagine that from this point the barrels might stick out a little bit. So we're just gonna have a couple of these. Kind of looks cool. Have more like that. No, no, you didn't like that. And then a heavy barrel end. And then a, let's see here, recoil suppression thing maybe, like that. And we can have like two normal barrels in between. This looks kind of cool, doesn't it? We might prolong this. We probably should prolong this a good bit, actually. All right. Ah, it looks like a muzzle brake. Isn't that cool? And that's kind of what it is. Right. So we'll see how slow this is. Oh god, it looks really slow. Um, we might modify it a little bit later, but... Oh, I got an idea. I can hide a motor barrel. It looks stupid. Let's tinker with that a lot later. I don't know even um, if adding more barrels would even make it much more accurate since, you know, whatever. So basically, um, I'm going to invent some Tetris for this thing. And I'm kind of thinking that we are going with the traditional Tetris that goes along these lines. Very nice indeed. And then we have one there, one there, and one there, and I'm gonna tinker with this. See you soon. Or kind of now, but later in your case, because I pause, you know, recording and then I do it. Get it? Jimodism start building, come on. We have made a tiny little bit of progress here. As you can see, uh, this is a thick slab of a not APS cram tetris um, where most of them are connected to three attachments. Very nice. So, um, and a lot of them are connected to uh, four packers, which is nice. So, while it's possible to do more efficient tetris, it's kind of difficult and not very space efficient, so this was the best I came up with uh, for this thing. And everything is of course connected on the bottom slab, uh, but we also want to connect these with a little sheet on this um, level as well, just to get some kind of extra survivability. And you can see I have started to move up the uh, armor as well here. So that's nice. Now we should also... Um, we should add some extra connections, but... Uh, other than that, I'll just finish off and add up um, the armor to the top. So one layer of underneath the supporting heavy armor with metal armor outside of it. I don't know if this is too much or too little armor, but I think it should be decent any at least for a capital turret, I hope. Of course we'll have armor um we'll have an armored tube on the particular uh, vessel we're gonna put this in. And because this is so huge we probably need to build a vessel specifically uh, to host this capital cram uh, turret because you know <clears throat> it's kind of large. Well, any case, let me just finish up this armor and uh, oh, by the way, the reload time is 6.3 seconds for a 200 millimeter shell. So that's that's a little bit funny. Right, so armored up here, but of course um, to kind of compartmentalize the uh, um, the turret well part or this is not a turret well but uh, the turret cylinder that goes in the well the bucket i don't know the thing that sticks down into the hull of the turret we want to compartmentalize that from the main uh, like top of the turret which will be kind of thick but we just want to limit it off a little bit um, in order to uh, increase survivability because this is going to be a expensive uh, turret of course. So I'm kind of just thinking to having it limited off like that and it should really um, be able to take a, a lot more beating than it otherwise would have. 
All right, so there we go. I have continued to close this off so it's completely closed off like that. We have connection pillars going up, if we want to see here. Um, kind of like that, added some more pellets and stuff like that. And I have now started to work on the uh, like other like overside of the turret. So here we have some uh, internal armor that's uh, built to sustain some pretty heavy damage going on there so that's kind of nice and I will of course fill this up with more pellet packers and um, make the turret you know kind of meaty so this internal armor here doesn't close off the turret it just closes off the uh, this part of the turret so we're actually gonna expand this a little bit and you'll see I'll just continue building on this thing a little more so I'm here Woods. There we go. So I finished this little, um, you know, interior section. We have some applique panels on top of there. Uh, and now I'm starting to fill out <coughs> the turret's um, outer layers of <laughs> cram and other. So, so this, uh, this video is a lot of Tetris, as you probably uh, already noticed. But I'm going to fill this cap as well. So we're going to get to have... A, pretty decent amount of firepower we can look at the stats right now it's only 146,000 materials which is kind of very cheap damn it like a APS turret this size is like half a million at least uh, probably more <clears throat> and this might not be as powerful as uh, such an AP APS turret would be, but technically, uh, statistically, it probably will be comparable, even though it won't hit very often, so it will be effectively not as uh, powerful. But anyways, um, I'm gonna fill this up and we'll see what uh, type of damage we can do with this thing, because I want this to be a meaty turret, a meaty turret that powers, uh, gives some real punch, you know? So yeah, let's do it. Oh my god, this cram Tetris is killing me. It's not the best Tetris. This is kind of semi crappy because I kind of grown it out from different uh, um, like tentacles with connections and they all connect together ish. So it's supposed to be durable. But you can see it's pretty big. I'm going to try and finish this um, hell thing and uh, just cover up the sides so I can so I don't have to look at this anymore oh my god uh, anyways what's what's the stats of this thing now I've tried to add compactors of course we're gonna reconfigure the layout and add uh, um, fuses and stuff and I also added a laser targeter uh, because we might need that um, stats here we have it 300,000 is that is that a doom cram is 300,000 a doom cram? It may be a doom cram, I don't know. Let me just spend another hour and I'll be back. Oh my god, uh, where is my mic? Here it is. I'm, <clears throat> I'm starting to think this is not worth the time investment. Like, oh my god, I think that uh, I would have made it a little bit bigger on top and I think I add a few modules of extra packers and stuff on top of here to make it a little higher and stuff like that. But to be honest, um, we added, uh, we filled in the layers here with acceptable Tetris <coughs> stuff connected to at least two stuff, you know, every packer. So uh, here we have, uh, what do we have? Yeah, it has a reload time of one minute. So I'll just cover up and compartmentalize off this layer. So I want a sheet of metal to kind of protect this area a little bit and then we'll probably add a little bit of more stuff there so let's go i'm basically watching through my entire watch later list on youtube while doing this so that's why <laughs> why it can take forever all right so now i've uh, completed some more of the shape and as you can see i'm uh, slowly filling in the top with some extra teeters going on here to further um power this cannon make it more slow firing i think once per minute is perhaps a little bit too fast for doom crams we'll see we'll do the tests uh, soon enough but uh, first we'll need to well fill up this space and connect them up well it's starting to look like something here 
And if we go down here, we can see that uh, it now has a well, reload speed of 71 seconds. That's more like it. This is probably a proper Doom Cram. And the cost of this entire build is now 700,000. So I think this turret is now half a million. Good job. All right. This thing is finally starting to look like something. We're just going to add a little end cap to it. And here I open up some windows uh, where we can put in some detection system. So I'm actually thinking like uh, having some metal portholes kind of whoops, hidden in here. Like that and that. And then we can have some radar equipment on top of that. And we can get a nice little detection to this thing too because it's it's so huge it probably will be uh, the main cost of the ship it's running at i also added these kind of uh, sturdiness support beams going on there ladies and gentlemen um, i have finally came up with a nice shape that i'm happy about we have closed in and connected everything i have this nice little wooden framework top on it because why not and uh, you can see it is armored, one layer of metal, one layer of applique to the top, and then we get to the top section. Then we get one layer of metal and like, um, yeah, more stuff. So it has several layers of armor and uh, of course the core as well. So it's pretty well protected. Now, um, now we should indeed check out, I had to add a lot more engine stuff because this thing was kept just blowing up. Anyways, uh, let's minimize our vision and dive into this little thing here. Here we have the laser designator and here we have the pellet thing. So I'm thinking a little bit on what type of uh, pellet we should choose. And I'm thinking a little bit about penetration depth or um, uh, what is it? Inertial, uh, no, 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 time from, not time from launch, time from first impact. Because I think that uh, the time from first impact might help us with uh, if we kind of bounce off um, shields and stuff like that. So I'm kind of thinking time from first impact and now let's see uh now we need to do some calculations so i guess that if this shell hits the target at 100 meters per second um it should be able to penetrate like 20 meters before uh, exploding if it just goes smoothly through so we probably can't have a ha have anything larger than this uh, anything larger than oh we can set something Anyways, 0 0.05 is probably a good starting point. Time for first impact. All right. Uh, so, of course, we do have this laser designator here. I'm not even sure it uh, will be need to be used. But uh, anyways, since I suppose this is not like really that type of time to use. Um, but uh, whatever. That works. Then we have uh, the inertial we should not bother with. We could do inertial, but nah, probably penetration depth, time for first impact is probably decently enough. So anyways, what do we have here? Um, let's try and make this more accurate in case, uh, you know, hopefully it will be able to shoot. So we have 400,000 material costs, pretty expensive cram in unpacking. Uh, we have three meter, 300 meters per second. Max gauge is uh, reasonable. Let's have a little bit of a um, idle elevation. Fragmentation angle, now 60 degrees here. This should be kind of powerful. So if we up this to maybe, maybe 120, it could be interesting. So we do prefer low and there we go. So here we have it. Uh, this is the setup I set up so far, hardener pellet. We might be over penetrating a little bit here. Um, I think we're gonna up the frag. We don't have an EMP charge because hopefully we don't need to resort to EMP to kill the target. So yeah. That is basically where we're going with this. So let us, oh, it looks, 
It looks glorious except that hole. Let me see here. <laughs> it's not very visible now. Okay, we have a little elevation uh, without having that visible. Oh, cool, of course, we can make a mimic to cover that up. I probably should, but whatever. Uh, also, I want to see how it looks when we have like maximum elevation going on there so it doesn't clip through. Oh no, it does clip through. Well, damn it. Oh yeah, I didn't think about the position of the... That looks like ass. Maybe we can... <laughs> Maybe we can handicap the turret a little bit later so it doesn't uh, do so much elevation. Three degrees is probably... I don't know, so. Anyways, uh, we're gonna save this thing, of course. We're gonna see this vehicle. Cram, this is the name of it, if you're interested. You shouldn't be. So, that would probably be absolutely fine. Now, this thing is fragile as it is, so we're of course gonna god mood it, and yeah. I'm just thinking to myself that before we spawn any targets, um, we're going to just install some extra, um, well, some extra uh, aiming capabilities of this thing, because that will definitely be uh, quite needed. So, uh, yeah. Right, there we have a pretty sturdy setup here. You can see here we have some uh, processing power. Uh, we do have the surge protectors here and around it. We have IR camera and trackers. Uh, we have these things that can actually th see through these blocks. And we have a little bit similar setup to this side, but radar instead of IR. So there we go, because the IR and radar can see through glass, if you didn't know that. So this should be absolutely very nice. For the memes of it, we of course have to spawn a Marauder, our uh, trusted enemy ship. So, let's see, ships, Le, Ma no, Le Marauder, very nice, and spawn, let's see what happens. And there we go, and it's miss, oh come on. <laughs> The, the first cram shot always misses, it's so annoying. Uh, unfortunately, uh, or I mean fortunately, because we're in designer mood, um, we can do like this, refill, cram cannons, whoops, that were fast. Come on. And that is a big hit, okay. Um, did this die? Not quite. It feels like our uh, um, our damage was a little bit, you know, weird. So how far are we from reloading this thing then, I wonder? Well, we are... Stop lagging game. Well, we have a good couple of while left. So I'm going to take over control and say refill cramp. No, I thought I had control. God damn it. Anyways, uh, it's kind of powerful. It should be a good setup indeed. So we of course need to spawn some more uh, meaty enemies to even properly gauge this. So now we can see if we can one-shot the uh, crossbones with this thing. And we'll probably need to do like this. We can actually toggle your fire off. And just repeal the refill, repeal. What is that? This grand cannon. So I'll, I'm gonna aim this myself in order to ensure an impact. All right. And the shot is incoming. Boom. That is an interesting explosion, but uh, I'm feeling we're we're like over penetrating this thing now. We probably need 180 degrees. Um, frag spread because this is not doing enough damage of course it isn't all right and I'm wondering a little bit about do we need more I'm thinking that our penetrative capabilities are probably a little bit too much right so I'm starting to think that perhaps we should have less hardeners and more frag right <clears throat> so it's already a big boy. Uh, we can probably decrease the hardener there and increase the frag and HE as well a little bit. Alright. 
Now we have reconfigured. We have another reloading time a little bit, but that's fine. And yeah, now we just need to go into the this little thing here. Gonna shrink down these. I wish there was a nice way to actually reach the um, this fuse without diving into it like that. All right. Where where is it now? I kind of forget. Come on. Oh, it's up here because it has to be connected. Of course it has to. Right. This wasn't, no, <laughs> what am I thinking? I think that setting was probably de decently okay, right? I'm thinking that possibly we need to make it detonate a little lower down the angle. Okay, fragmentation is now just like that. We can now save this thing and destroy enemy vehicles and spawn a fresh crossbones. All right. So I'm going to select somewhere to shoot. Let's shoot here and let's slow down the time. Did I shoot? No. I'm still packing the payload. Okay, it hasn't gone a minute yet. Okay. Right. Designer mode, cram cannons. There we go. Oh, the time is slow motion though. This is the problem. Oh, there we go. Can we aim on this thing? And it will now aim towards the target and fire. That's a big boom. Now we can slow down the time a little bit in order to see what happens. And oh no, it didn't, it bounced. God damn it. I thought that uh, my time from impact would work here. It seems that the time from impact does not work. Well, damn, that's, we need to use the laser targeter or something like that. That's, this is unacceptable. Let's just uh, switch this from inertial uh, for the fun of it to make it explode if we have an angle change. Um, because otherwise, uh, let's see if it just over penetrates. I'm kind of curious about that. So let's do it. There we go. And action. Come on. And it creates a nice big boom that did some damage but i'm still not feeling that uh, it still doesn't have that doom cram feeling i kind of even wonder exactly how that damage went down so perhaps we need more frag and less uh, we possibly need more frag and less explosive because we totally annihilate that area all right so i'm thinking that we will ex uh, we will select time from launch uh, instead if uh, for inertial uh, so time from launch and we set it to this kind of value 0 0.0 uh, seconds that's a little bit that's a little bit scary but it should work because we have set up um, to do to do Let's see here. Time from. I oh I don't really remember, but I think it was some in. I think it was in the, these terms that you can set it to offset time 0 0.5, save the distance thing, time from launch, and it will kind of just work. <clears throat> but we'll see about that. We'll definitely see about that. And other than that, uh, we have reconfigured the cram a little bit, so we have a. Uh, 73 second reload time, hardener pellet, more frag, a little bit of EMP, and uh, there we go. So let us indeed target, let's spawn a new one. All right, there we are. So let's fire and see what happens. 
There we got a decent explosion, but it definitely hit or it exploded on the side of the thing. We didn't get any type of uh, penetration there. I wonder if it's because the time from launch um, that we need to give it some more kind of uh, more time from launch because it's it's getting slowed down by hitting the armor. That's possible. So if we just can find a fuse sometime. There it was. So, set the time from launch to like 0. Points. No, it's here. That was 0 0.05. So, let's tenth of a second. Maybe that works. We'll just set this to refill, cram cannons. And we can do like this. And we can do like this. Like that. Yeah, now, now we go. Now it should target it automatically, so we can see. With a better, beautiful slow motion thing, hopefully. Um, maybe I just messed up. Okay, now it's the AI. Okay, good. Come on. It's... Oh, I forgot. Here we have it. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I forgot about that. Alright. Beautiful explosion. So let us speed up a little bit until... Up, 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 um. And it explodes on the shell. That's kind of weird. Um, right, so my... This isn't working very well for me. I need to get more penetration going on there. It's uh, maybe I have too little penetration actually. That's possible. It's possible also that uh, the the laser time fuse for everything isn't really what we're looking for here. Maybe I'll actually have to take the risk of it just going all to waste because uh, of. Uh, it's bouncing off a shield. Maybe I'll just have to take that risk and just remove that time for launch and just have a proper penetration depth of something like five meters. Um, and hopefully it's strong enough to penetrate any anything but still not like over penetrating. So that's possible. Okay. <clears throat> We shall try again. So let's let's fly with this thing a little bit and see what happens. Come on, slow down time. What are you doing? And there we go. Explosion inside of the ship. That is much more uh, preferable than we had before. Very acceptable. And now it gets kind of a low health thing, whatever. Good, good. Okay, so to make sure that wasn't just a silly thing, let us spawn a another crossbones. Let's take the control. And we'll fire at a suitable spot. I'm packing the payload. So we will refill it. see what happens and that was a weird kind of explosion going on there uh, why did it hit there no, whatever we are no what are you doing I'm trying to repair this thing thank you now we can reload you and that's that's ass accuracy <laughs> or no, it's not. It's it's just poor targeting. I can't. I probably can't make the big, the the boom big enough for um, targeting to not matter at all. Uh, so we'll just have to make sure it aims at the center of the vehicle. Well, that was that was a poor hit. We we'll probably let's do like this. Let's turn off that thing. Let's. Uh, 
also refilled materials, but refill this cram cannon. Let's aim myself when I have repaired this to pristine condition and select the suitable aim point. I think around there should indeed kill it. So let's go. And this is weird. Five meters. So there is a risk we kind of hit too early. Um, so we probably should make our penetration depth a little bit, uh, a little bit better here. So let's say so like, like 10 meters with a slight risk of over penetrating, of course. But we cannot just accept that the damage goes to waste because of some outer part going on there. So here we have 10. Yeah, I'll guess penetration depth is uh, really what we're going for here. Are you repaired? Did you damage yourself? Oh. <laughs> now we go. Okay. Uh, we try again. What do you mean can't fire in that direction? Okay, it's it's like just slowly moving. There we go. Okay. Impact. Yes. Here we have a proper explosion. All right. What what are the stats from this? 87%. We killed another AI, but hmm, I'm still kind of feeling this doesn't really pack the punch we uh, demand. And this is I think this is a good penetration for bigger ships. And I think the explosion is good enough. I'm slowly considering that the explosion is so big that we don't really need that much explosive power, to be honest. I think we already removed the blocks in that area. So we further remove the high explosive pellets and increase the frag ones. And let's put out this cannon and see... Yeah. Let's maybe lower this a tad bit more. 71 seconds. Okay. Dear. 78 seconds. So now it's uh, now it's properly slow. <clears throat> like a minute and 20 seconds. So we should probably uh, reload this thing. And whoops. Turn against in this direction. And just repair this thing a little bit, so we can make sure if we one-shot it or not. Very nice. And then we shoot it again. Ta-da! Shot incoming. Alright, so now it did more frag damage, and the frag was of course spread. Um, we did do a proper penetration. I feel that we need to we need to use this against some other bigger uh, targets as well because this is just like we can't practice against the uh, like butter because if we can't damage the big boys then there is like no need for this turd. There are easier ways to destroy the crossbones. So let's go over to the stronghold which is a proper 1.4 million. I'm kind of expecting big problems with this uh, craft's shields. So we're just gonna refill this cram here. Uh, we're gonna see, choose an aim point. Let's shoot around there. See what happens. And it bounced. So that's kind of the issue here. We don't want it to bounce. Come on. Let, let's try again and see if we can make it work. And... Cram shot incoming. And it doesn't bounce. It blows up some stuff. We have a little bit of EMP going on there. But... It's only that. On this, I'm kind of feeling that the frag is prob... I'm probably overdoing the frag here. It's just... It's basically like nuking that portion where it hits. The portion where it hits is just not enough. 
So let's try and shoot again, but more against the citadel area. And see if it bounces, and it does. Ooh, I'm feeling that f the shields are a little bit uh, annoying. Um, we probably need to ditch the penetration depth, to be honest. We need to fine-tune the penetration so it's not like uh, over-penetrating. Let's try this a little bit with... Uh, just going in here and we're going to go to configure loadout. Let's see what... let's actually save this thing th uh, first. So we're just gonna save this. And we're going to... Go on... God, this is... We have problems. Right. So I'm on, I want to test this by exchanging the frag. So five. So basically fifty. One. And I'm just gonna remove the frag and just have an EMP cannon. And it should be kind of the same reload speed. So let's see here. Seventy nine. Okay, close enough. So now now we have an EMP only cannon, right? And this thing is nowhere packed because we changed its loadout. So we are going to... Let's refill the material and load a cram cannon. This thing is actually entirely fixed. Um, we want to dive in here also because we need to change the fuse. Yeah. So, um, we are saying goodbye to penetration depth because it isn't applicable to the doom cram we want it to detonate anyways by always exhausting its maximum penetration so we really need to be careful with the over penetration for this thing so anyways where is where is it i need to make oh, i need to make it findable i made it fun uh, findable with some uh, crosses in pink where they are so anyways, uh, let's set it to inertial, we can set it to explode at a very small angle change and now we're going to, uh, yeah, now we're just going to try this out and see what the EMP does uh, if we bounce and if we don't bounce we wanna see exactly what's going on there. So damage debugging, record projectile effects and record EMP effects, okay. So now we just need to wait it for turn. We have uh, successfully turned the cannon. Very nice. So now we're going to make a nice hit at the citadel or something. So the shot is incoming and it completely bounces and completely dies, but it kills the air. <laughs> well, that was unexpected because they are in a different construct. Okay, um, this EMP cannon is so powerful that we we can nuke this thing. And in an earlier, was it was it Nico Pence or was it someone else? I don't remember. Was it Halofo? Sorry, I don't remember. But somebody said that uh, this is a good EMP protection. It has a good EMP protection. And if I was able to nuke that with one shell, maybe like okay. EMP might not be as cool, but if I can nuke this thing with one shot, whatever I do, I'm very happy. Like, if I can just nuke this thing with one single shot, and I'm thinking that I accidentally set up the damage debugging on the wrong thing here. Well, I did. If I can nuke it with one shot, that's good enough. All right, stronghold, damage debugging, EMP, oh, no. Yes, okay. So, let's try that again. And it's saying, sinking down the turret, and it says, kaboom, in a while, packing, oh, come on, oh no, no way. Okay, there we go again. Now it should be nice. What do you mean reloading? Okay. I fired a shot. And it... Okay. 
So it bounced and the EMP went where? All right. Did it destroy anything or did it just Well, that's that's sad. Okay, let's try again. Then. We still haven't gotten a penetration um, test yet. So let's fire again. Still turning. And we're firing. Shots incoming. And there we go. Okay. Okay. What happened here now? I'm kind of want to pause this game here a little bit just for us to see what happened like did the shell I think th oh right this is because uh, this is because we don't have a fuse the the shell is instantly destroyed uh, yeah I kind of forgot about that so much for not having that fuse uh, it's inertial so it just explodes. It doesn't deal on it. Oh yeah, that's that's just my mistake, to be honest. Uh, we need to find another fuse. All right, we change it to a time from first kind of uh, impact thing. So uh, now it should probably detonate, maybe when we bounce, or maybe a little bit after that. But it's tenth of a second so okay what happened here now I wonder that's some insane EMP spread it's snaking through the entire build and uh, sharing off parts and did it like even penetrate I wonder I think it did <clears throat> so it looks like this is where we hit Bam 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 bam. Wait. Okay, I think this was the same round. We went through this turret, and then we detonated. Uh... No, wait. We shot clean through the thing, right? All right. Um, this was the... okay. It's still definitely over penetrating. We don't need as many hardeners. That's clear. Um, it just melted through this thing, uh, might even have damaged some heavy armor there. Uh, and now the EMP is snaking all over the place. Interesting. But unfortunately, it didn't AI dead this thing. So we're just gonna repair everything. And we're going to clear this debug thing. All right. Rams, reload. Thank you. So let us uh, try again. Did this is what happened there? Anyways, let's shoot somewhere here. Okay. Still turning, firing, and now we have uh, we can slow down time so we can see what happens. What? There it went. Whips, vroom, 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 and the shell is through. Okay, the shell went through there. All right. So, I don't know why. It seems that it puts out the EMP damage, but the shell doesn't get exploded. Sometimes this game makes me kind of confused. Uh, because the shell seems to be not detonating at... Oh yeah, now it did. So that was after what? That was a long time. So it, it goes a long time in uh, that amount of seconds. And now it AI killed this vessel, so that's good. But it's definitely over penetrating. So let's tinker a little bit. Right, so I tried to tune this a little bit. Maybe 0 0.03 seconds will be uh, kind of a decent ish penetration thing uh, that we won't go too far, uh, possibly. And now I added some frag to this thing, right? Uh, so before we only had EMP, now we have EMP and frag to 180 degrees going on there and much less hardener. 
because uh, we shot through that thing like it was butter, so it obviously was completely overpenetrating. So, anyways, let's spawn a new of these. All right, let us see there. Aiming, and we're well, just gonna shoot right there. Shot is incoming. And now we can see the detonation took place kind of on it. And I guess that is because of it. Did it bounce on a shield? Not quite sure, actually. Anyway, let's repair this thing. Let us reload that thing. Come on. Refill, cram. Let's target like behind it and see what, what happens. Oh. No? I think it bounced, right? So this is the damage we do if we bounce. The frags do go through it. That is interesting. We're gonna repair that again. We are going to refill that again. Better refill those. And we also are going to turn on damage debugging. So, let us see here. Can we hit here again? Shot incoming. Let's slow down time a little bit. Okay. And it goes through, and it goes through, and what's happening? It should explode, right? Oh, it stops. It went too much, too much resistance there. These are kind of heavy, the, the mega big pistons. All right, EMP surges are going around. And it's just falling through this thing. We can speed it up a little bit. And now we're exploding. Okay. So that's a good explosion inside of it. Okay, great. And what effects did this have? Now it's... Uh, I'm having a hard time speeding up. Because it's so laggy, right? Yeah. It's just dealing so much damage and recording everything. So what happened here? Um, firstly, we came in here with a shot, went through, melted like butter, 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 all through, and it explodes inside engine compartment down to the bottom. Uh, during this passage on initial contact, which is here, I guess. The EMP surges down, go down here, and just kills a laser system, so the lamps are down. Uh, this turret thing goes around there, and then there is more EMP next time we hit, and it kind of magically transforms to the turrets, and it also killed the AI, seems like, somewhere. That's interesting. And now it's just uh, dying. So definitely kill this in one shot. But I think um, we have a big risk of actually shooting through the targets. So we're going to see if we can have a really, really, really small uh, time from launch thing here. Let's see here. That's the laser. Maybe I need to set up the laser though. Where it is. Uh, here we have laser offset time so it was kind of like that zero zero and we have this thing ooh let's let's change this to 0 0.01 I think this is the lowest value we can have and possibly we have what we're looking for all right Let's shoot this thing and see what happens. But um, and there we go. And somehow it exploded up there. Okay. 
So I think... What did it do? It kind of bounced up somehow. It really said it seemed it did. Well, definitely like no kill shot. This time we kind of hit a tur I think we hit the shield to be honest. Well anyways. So we reset this thing a little bit and we're going to try and hit it again. So there we go, shot incoming. Let's oh and it bounced. I wonder though uh, if they removed setting in the laser targeter if that's possibly a problem. Maybe we need to set it only in the laser targeter and not in the uh, yeah, it's possible. So let us just refill this cram. It didn't do any damage. So we can just uh, shoot it again. Well, let's see here. And now it exploded in the air again. Okay, that's weird. And these frags, they just melt straight through. So they're, they're definitely powerful. That's some damage that go uh, unutilized. All right, we're trying 0 0.02 inside of the laser targeter and we're setting the fuse to uh, zero, so basically on impact and hopefully it will use the laser targeter's uh, thing to determine the explosion. So, cram shell repaired. This thing, you can be totally repaired too. Signer mode, repair all, go in here, damage debugging, clear all, and, well, I suppose we'll fire and see what happens. Shots incoming, and it bounces, but the EMP surge, what? So, it bounced and exploded in the air. That's good, that's good, that's good news, I think. It didn't kill anything, so let's just repair it, because it uh, nuked the, those shields, I believe. We can clear it, and just... Do, 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 do. Come on. Refill the cram. And let's do it all again. So, shots incoming. And it bounces. And now it didn't work. Oh my god. This makes me confused. Well, let's just fire again and see whatever happens now. Um, okay, now it went... No. It didn't went through. Now it exploded up here. Huh. So the laser targeter is... Is... Time from impact, time from launch, yeah. Maybe the impact one does matter too. It's not, it doesn't go for the laser targeter. It's like it's automatically just exploding on impact now. It might be that uh, for this fuse that the laser targeter isn't actually used. That's completely possible that it's just the impact thing. Okay, so I'm now experimenting with high altitude. So it will explode on zero altitude with a little, uh, with, with the tiniest offset we can imagine. Uh, so it would explode a little bit before maybe, if it even works mixing these. So, okay, offset altitude, negative of zero one. So I guess that means before, uh, possibly. Right. So hopefully, this setup will make the results that I want, basically. So, let us kinda try and see what happens. Shell is incoming. Or is it? Don't tell me it has It should have loaded. Packing, are you kidding me? How is this? Did it reset because I was like... I don't know. 
changing the fuse. Okay, now then. Let's try again. Shell is incoming. No. What is happening? What happened with the shell? Okay, come on, come on, come on. This is scary. Okay, come on. Fire the damn cannon. Don't tell me that the shell is despawned because... Oh no. Does it explode over there? Now I played from the depth for so many hours that my PC is complaining. It's uh, I had to go and turn up the fans a little bit because it's it's <laughs> started to become too hot. Anyways, I changed it to a low altitude fuse with some time delay and stuff like that. And now what happened here? It's supposed to detonate not that high up in the air. That was kind of interesting. I wonder if that was because of the shields, perhaps. I don't know. Let's repair this thing and refill this cram. There we go. Come on. And let's try again. All right. You can aim in that direction. So it exploded before because I had it on high altitude fuse instead of low altitude fuse. And now it explodes on contact again. Yeah, that doesn't work. Hmm. Maybe actually the laser targeter is the problem here. Um, I'm gonna try and remove the laser targeter and see if it fixes my problem. Alright, here we go again. Oops, I see her. Shots incoming. Ah. I think it's the shields, to be honest. I think the shields saved this thing. And now we accidentally AI killed this thing, so that's, yeah. Alright, we spawned a fresh one. And the shot is incoming. Very nice. And it bounces. Well done. I don't know if we can protect ourselves against the bounces, to be honest. Or we could do, but uh, then we had to have a... Kinda... Uh, kind of shot. Sharp frag cone, excuse me, and that just aims towards the enemy and uh, you know sp spread spreads a lot of frags into the enemy. God damn it! Okay, what happened here? We got an explosion, but uh, on the surface, and this is just too low. Too high, too high, too high. Nah. And I kind of just realized that uh, I could have put a temporary fuse on the outside here from the beginning. Except I didn't. But whatever. Let us shoot this thing and ride with this shell. So what values do we have? Hello. You're not gonna tell me your values? <laughs> Apparently not. Well, that's too bad. No! It was set to negative 5, though. Alright, let's see here. There we got an interesting explosion going on there. Possibly... Our armor penetration is now so bad. Hmm. Might it be something like that? Because the fuse is not really set up to do that. Don't tell me that I have to have a pen depth on this thing. Maybe it's the only answer. Negative 5, it shouldn't do that. So let's switch to penetration depth of 8 meters or something like that. 
Maybe 10. That's annoying. Now the AI controls this thing, so... We'll be instantly, like, shooting it. So before I had a big problem, I turned... Uh, what? Come on, you can't miss that shot, can you? That's so bad. Alright, let's try again. And we'll slow down time a little bit. God, the accuracy of this thing. The accuracy is really bad. And it seems to be the AI more. Okay. There we go. Slow down time. What will happen here? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's so bad. All right. Is it How come? Yeah, let's try let's just try one shot more here. Here it's coming. And it bounces. So these bouncing shots are kind of annoying. It was a decent aim though, but that doesn't save us. And now what happened here? Well, it basically, if it penetrated anything, it penetrated the shield and then it exploded like this. Kind of not uh, very acceptable at all. So I'm wondering if uh, the pen depth seems to not have solved anything really. And I feel that for testing this, like, actually, no, oh, oh no, now I failed again. Oh, come on. I just want to look at this thing. Does it even, like, work? Okay, what are you doing? You are tracking one target. Yes, you are. Alright. Locked on. Cool. Locked on. Alright. Enabled. Working. Tracking, tracking, tracking. Yes. Radar. Everything is targeted and locked on. We should have max accuracy on this thing. And how about this thing here? Diameter, firepower, pa 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 recoil. And accuracy. What is accuracy? Inaccuracy 0.24%. Okay. So, just curiously, what if we are. If we're adding a little bit of barrel on this thing. Okay, that's not the wrong. That's not the right area. There we go. Yeah, okay. We seem to not get be able to get it more accurate than it already is. It's it doesn't wanna be more accurate, even though we add a couple of barrels. Well, that's good to know. So this thing It should be working. We should be able to reload it and just follow the shot. Now it went through. That's interesting. So we definitely still have the capability of over penetrating. I'm starting to think that for this particular design we have to just skip on uh, trying to have some kind of um, we can't counter shields with this thing. Shield will will, ba will will basically have to accept that shields is a weakness, because uh, if I want to make this, yeah, let's let's try making this countering for shields. Um, so basically, if we do, if we switch for frag like that, apply to cannon. Oh, that's fine. Fragmentation cone of like. I don't know, 14 degrees. That should counter the shields. Reload that thing. Fly with a bullet. Ooh. See, boom. And yeah, now the shields didn't... Uh, 
Let's repair you. Okay, very nice. Damage debugging. Clear this. You can reload. Okay. For the first time in my life, hope for a bounce. No? Okay. It it was a penetration. <laughs> it's kind of a nice damage pattern though, but uh, okay. Again, repair this thing. Come on. And reload. Okay, hope for bounce. Let's see here. Boom. That's not a bounce. This 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 shell doesn't want to bounce. You can see all that over penetrating wasted wasted firepower that goes into the bin. Yeah. Let's see here. We're gonna go with no 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 no. Cram cannons. There we go. Okay, come on now. Let's hope for a bounce. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Nani. Oh yeah, I need to have a fuse too. Otherwise called inertial. So here we go. Inertial. Woohoo. There. Now we can try the same thing once again. Uh, by the way. We need to reload. Instead of waiting 80 seconds. Okay. Here we go. Huh. That was a great hit though. Even though it didn't bounce, let's see what type of damage this did. It it did some damage though. It's down to 89%, but it looks devastating. Wow. That's pretty cool though. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I recorded that, but I still want to see the bounce. So, no, uh, da, 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 da. it seems that our accuracy has uh, been improved somehow, I don't know. And there we can see. So, it bounced on the shield, right here. But even though it did bounce, the frag just ate up all the damage. And this is how we make a cram that uh, counters a shield. But it's also... It's not a doom cram. I want this thing to actually just kill this thing in one shot. Um, and I think we... we oh, I already said this, but we need to accept that we're not getting through shields. We will not be able to get through shields. And uh, let's just ignore shields. Yeah. Okay, I did a quite bit more uh, testing here. And uh, what I ended up with, with uh, is actually to have a normal pen depth uh, fuse for 8 meters, despite everything I said before. Uh, it's hard to not make this over penetrate, so we have to detonate it somewhere. <clears throat> and uh, the pen depth fuse seems to be the best. I just ignore the shields because we can't counter them in a good way with this uh, cannon. Or we can, but that's a different cannon. And now I made a proper um, doom cram. This is a reload time of 500 seconds. We have some hardeners, more than we need. High explosive, we have most frags, and we have some EMP. And even though this should theoretically absolutely nuke anything it touches... Let's see if we can get to a, a good touch here. We could. I just feel like Doom Crams, in general, is just a bad idea. This is not the way to go. 500 seconds for this. It's not even dead. And I was able to kill this thing before with some EMP uh, death. So basically, um, I'd say we, I'd, I'd say like this. You cannot make, prove me wrong if you can, but I'd say like this. You cannot make a cram cannon that kills anything in a shot. It's just not possible. This thing is a half a million turret. It's big and it reloads every 500 seconds. That's super slow. And it still doesn't kill this thing. That's completely unacceptable. So basically what I feel like is that... Uh, 
we should instead make this a faster fire and cram cannon. Yeah, not like a fast fire cram because you know that would be weird. But we should probably make it a little bit more reasonable setup. We have some hardeners here, a little bit of high explosive, some frag at 180 degree, and a good bit of EMP. So let's see how many seconds we end up with here. 54. So okay, this is this is still kind of doom cram territory. But uh, if we just reload this thing. And mind you, this thing will shoot almost 10 times uh, per the, the previous shot. Now we just need to have a shot that actually hits because otherwise it's useless. Here we go. Alright, see if it bounces. No. And there we go. We got a pretty meaty explosion from this too. Like, it's enough. It's about as good as the as the Doom Cram shot. You can see we we our frags went through this thing. It's completely perforated. It will start sinking at this rate. And imagine ten times we can hit this ten time with this shot. And there is also a big chance that we'll actually uh, can um, that we can AI dead this thing because this has a serious EMP charge. So you can see. Boom, there we go. Not the best not the best hit. But you can see, um, it does deal quite some damage. So that was kind of the values I came up with before. But to be honest, let's let's make this capital turret some um, thing that actually kind of deals more damage. So I'm thinking that we're gonna have way less compactor weights like that. Like I'm almost thinking like how about how about we just make this spam like EMP? We can make this fragmentation go down to like a little bit less like this. And we'll have it real high in frag. No, in uh, in EMP. So now it will shoot every 10 seconds. So imagine this. Uh, we can have 50 shots like this. 50 shots like this for a one uh, 500 shot. We can actually take this time to... Okay, let's check here. We actually did some damage there. It's like not the insane damage from... Uh, the other shots, but whoops. Let's just repair this thing and clear the damage debugging so we can see the, the rest of the shots that are incoming. Because no matter how extremely I set this up, uh, we just won't one shot this thing, except if we have a lucky shot and AI did this thing, then we can one shot it, but not otherwise. So we can see here, if we just pause the game a little bit, we can see what type of damage we do here. So here it went through, penetrated this, 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 exploded here, uh, went through and killed all that stuff. And then EMP comes. And we can see next shot what happened here. We came through, went through, 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 and exploded here. Looks like 180 degrees would be the way to go. And already a new shot is incoming. And that's bouncing, of course it is. We can do like... Uh, no. We can just reload a couple of times there. Here we can see... This thing goes down, and... It goes there. New shot is incoming. And of course, this isn't perfectly set up. But, um, yeah. I just I just want to make a point that Doom Crams, I don't know. Especially since the Crams have the very extreme unpoliteness of always missing the first shot. Uh, it's not the way to go. Here we can see now it deals uh, quite some penetration there. It's not extreme though. We need more frag to actually have some proper penetration. 
So this is this is relying a little bit too heavily on the EMPs. And it's actually a bit too fast shooting. But you can see that this thing is... Uh, it's taking some damage, but not too much. It's here. This is a kind of meaty build, though. Alright, what type of damage do we do here? We ate away that thing. It seems that hitting the middle turret will instantly AI dead this thing. It's like some proper, <laughs> proper damage there. You can see one shot takes off a turret like that. Very interesting. Alright, so now we kind of have a shell that's uh, basically reloading every 30 seconds. And it's uh, it's supposed to AI kill this thing. And it was already damaged, but you can see it's now AI dead. So let's see if we can repeat this thing. I put the weight on EMP. That's here. Damage debugging. So I'm starting to think that EMP might be the best thing that um, we can have for a like real killer cram setup. Here we have some spread like that. 30 seconds, yeah. It goes through. It's just a little bit of frag, but it completely goes through. And there we go. One shot more incoming. And are we lucky? We are not. But what happened here? Well, that went out. Went out dump. So it feels a little bit with EMP. It's really about uh, if you get that lucky shot or not. But as we've seen in like earlier in this video, it's completely possible to just AI dead this thing with uh, EMP in one shot. It's absolutely possible. But here it goes through like that. Dut, 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 dut. Not starting to die. It's still kind of high percentage to be honest. Yeah, you'll need to find a balance, but uh, like... The extra damage that the so-called like doom cram setups did, it just it's just not worth it. Like, really not worth it. So let's see if we can make a super overpowered let's see here. 60 seconds for just EMP. 160 seconds, okay. What what like this? Let's make a serious EMP slammer. Okay. A little less. So we want the EMP to kind of uh, teleport inside. 200 and... Yeah, okay. 200 seconds. Okay, we accidentally killed that thing. No, repair. Too late. Is it? It's too late. Okay, we need to destroy enemy vehicles and spawn a new one. All right. Crime cannons, refill. And boom. Now we get this EMP charge going in and of course we didn't turn on damage debugging. So, let's see here. I don't know if it did much damage. Fire the cram cannon again, see if it jumps. And it did. Well, sometimes the shields gotta work. Okay. 200 second EMP slammer. Boom. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it just oh yeah okay it just went it just melted through a little bit there it feels like uh dependent on the enemy you just have to be lucky lucky hitting it like we can do some serious damage but uh 
most of the time this EMP is going to waste. So I feel like we don't need that. No matter how much EMP charge we kind of put in there, we won't be able to uh, override any type of smartness. So we can't, it seems that we can't brute force like the EMP power. It is still not AI dead. And how many seconds would we have not need to wait for this? Now it's definitely like this. Uh, we need to have a combo set up. If we want to have a strong cannon, um, we'll need something like, let's see here. We need some frag, frag of, let's see here. We need a few hardener pellets, not too many compactors, something like 50 maybe. Hardener, then we have a good bit of high explosive, a little more of frag, a ish bit of EMP. Apply that, see what kind of reload time we get, 45 seconds. Right, so let's turn down the uh, packers. 44. I'm looking to go somewhere around, I think somewhere around like 20, right? 23. Okay, so I like that. Fragmentation angle, say to kind of high like that. Right, 20 seconds. We can fire this thing every 20 seconds. So that's uh, decently quickly. And now it got detonated on top of there, but it still did some substantial damage. And just imagine like this damage compared to if we can only fire it once every 500 seconds. So sure, um, we did a hole here and we could make a huge hole if we waited much longer, but it seems to not just be worth it. And uh, I thought for a while that we can basically rely on having a 100% EMP and just brute force the thing, but it seems that that won't cut it at all. So anyways, let us let us repair this thing, refill this thing a little bit and clear the debugging. Okay. So we're we're just going to see how many shots do we need to uh, kill this thing. Boom. That's just one explosion. I think it's a bit laggy because I'm kind of uh you know, recording the damage. It feels like let's it's kind of nice, but let's let's actually clear that. Let's ignore the explosions. It's too much information. All right. Fire again. Okay. I just want to have it was too long time ago we made a slow motion shot. Bam! You see that? That's some damage. We crippled the big missiles there. Okay, cool. Alright, we don't need that slow motion. Firing again. Okay, 91%. It had some substantial damage done to it, that's for sure. Fire this thing again. Coming in here. Badoom. Destroying the side. Is this our lucky EMP damage shot? Nah, that just tries a turret, okay. Fire again. I remember like this when this thing is firing every 20th uh, second. So if you compare it to like 200 seconds or something like that, we would be able to shoot like, I don't know, like 10 shots for some of the doom cram setups. So I think basically from this is that the one minute reload speed can pack some serious punch. That's that's for sure. But I feel like if it's over one minute, it seems to basically kind of never be, be worth the damage we do. Like while this isn't dead, it's badly, badly damaged. It's kind of sinking. It will have trouble shooting us. 
and while it's cool to kind of would be able to one shot your enemy it's just not it's just not possible I thought that cramps would possibly be my friend for like <laughs> one shotting the enemy as uh, it would do kind of enough damage okay now the health went below 80 and because all of the frags it were sinking so it's dead all right so for just the fun of it let's let's go back and spawn a uh, crossbones and just see if our new setup of this every 20 seconds cannon can actually do some damage here all right let's see here we're waiting in slow motion because slow motion is so cool boom and that's a nice explosion will it be enough though probably not the EMP probably didn't get led anywhere well it's a big hole I think one of the AS is, is down no come on what's maybe it's wrong with my aim now we accidentally shot two shots, but whatever. The ring coming here. Boom. Penetration. Explosion. Bang. Did some damage. Ate all that up. Not much metal, so not much uh, EMP. 76 percentages. So it's, uh, it's basically down. One shot more and it should be indeed dead. Is that three shots or something? We'll miss that one. Because that's like an equivalent of a... We probably can have this at like uh, 60 seconds. But because the... <laughs> that's just sheer right through. But because the uh, first shots kind of always miss, it's not worth it, is it? Oh, come on. <clears throat> I feel like I have much more potential at one-shotting my enemies when when aiming myself because oh, God damn it AI. What the hell are you doing? I set it up to penetrate at like eight meters We can set it up to penetrate at like five meters and it would be optimal for this thing but uh, Well, of course we can't have optimal can we? Where is this shot going though? Right through. Right through, of course it is. Okay. Yeah, so I suppose that's kind of that. Um, I hope that you learned something. I definitely learned a lot um, during this little session. Uh, even though this little session is, uh, oh god, <laughs> far too long. Nah, it just melts through. It has too much. Uh, it has too much hardness, I think. We can see our cram settings. We load out hardener pellet. We can decrease that. Increase some EMP. Should probably be good enough. All right. Oh, and maybe maybe we should try it against some kind of uh uh now it died. That was it. That was a nice hit, you know. Maybe we should try it against some kind of hard thing. Um yeah, let's see here. What should we select? Here we have uh, the Lightning Hoods in pendants. God, that's quick though. It's a 1 million. It's a 1 million build. It's very quick too. I'm not actually sure we'll be able to hit this thing. Are you even turning? Now it let out the shot. Oh, really? Nah, not really. Not very near it. 
<clears throat> Let's just, just shoot a couple of times and see if it can even hit this thing. Oh, it can't. It's too quick. That thing is too quick. The Megalodon is pretty big, I suppose. So maybe we, maybe we can do it against this thing, possibly. If we'll just zoom in. Now we're so far away, though. Not the ideal thing for a cram cannon, I must say. Miss. Is this also too quick? Well, it did do some damage there. That's a good hole. But uh, I'm feeling that we're way out of our uh, effective kind of range here. All right. Oh no. That's a hit. We went for the upper structure there. It feels like we're so far away. I don't know how often we'll even hit this thing. Ah, we're bouncing on the waves. Let's actually spawn a little bit closer perhaps. No, that's a good hit though. You can see that's some good damage. We'll need a couple of shots more. And here we have a significant EMP load going around and frying some stuff in here. Wonder if that pack turret is completely dead now or something. Oh, another shot incoming. So you can see where we have the Megalodon down to 80% and... It might start sinking and dying, to be honest. Our fair share of EMP is doing a good bit of frying, too. So, now it's possible that we'll need some kind of extra uh, stuff to be able to kind of shoot down the incoming, uh, or to not get the incoming thing, like, shot down. We might need to have some kind of, uh, you know, protection. Do, do, do. Where are you? Here we have it. Now we have uh, still waters at least. I want. I want to get a nice, a nice shot there. Yes. There we go. And the EMP is coming in handy here. Boom! Very nice. Now, we would make a very formidable craft to be able to beat this thing, of course. Um, that build is kind of uh, quite good. But now it's still, because we damaged the engine. Very nice. And here we can see 64%. We deal some good damage. We definitely deal some good damage against this thing. Oh, that's cool. Well, any case, um, I think that will be it for this time. Um, I'm kind of happy with this turret. It might be a little bit over penetrating, but uh, it's very powerful, but uh, it's definitely not like a Doom Cram. It seems that Doom Cram as a concept is just um, pretty. Uh, useless. Anyways, uh, post your opinions in the comment section and we'll make more videos. We'll be back with missiles, of course. In any case, um, like and subscribe. This is your host, Jim Adesim, signing out.